What's up guys? I'm going to compare the best of the best Wi-Fi 7 mesh systems. These things are designed to boost your Wi-Fi coverage at home and they can all handle internet speeds of up to 10 gigabits. So I've done individual speed test range tests for all of these. I have all those numbers here with Wi-Fi devices such as these. Now do keep in mind if you have the latest iPhone like the 16 Pro Pro Max like the Pro Max that I have here or if you have the Pixel 8, 8 Pro, or the Pixel 9 series, which also supports Wi-Fi 7, for some reason, those phones, as of now, can't get the crazy fast Wi-Fi speeds like I can get off these devices. So keep that in mind. It has nothing to do with the mesh systems. It's with the device itself as of right now, unless there's a firmware update or something like that coming to the latest iPhone or the latest Pixel. Starting with the Deco B85, we got a little nice seven right here, signifying a Wi-Fi seven device. Deco in the front, cylindrical shape, got some vents on the top. We got the ports in the back, we got the WPS, we got two 2.5 gigabit ports, we got two 10 gig ports, or optionally, instead of this bottom 10 gig port, you could use the SFP Plus port, which is also supports 10 gigs. They are auto detecting ports, which means no matter which one you connect your modem or your ONT to, it will automatically detect it. We also have USB 3.0, we got the power port right here, we got some vents on the bottom, and we got the factory reset. Next we get to the Eero Max 7, glossy white front, matte white finish on the back. We got a bunch of vents on the top, on the bottom right here, and on the bottom over there as well. We got the little factory reset button right here. Let me bring it closer. We got two 2.5 gigabit ports, we got two 10 gig ports, and we got the USB-C for power, which I love. And then we have the Deco B95, which is essentially identical to the B85 in terms of size and shape and the ports. In fact, I have to look at the bottom to see which one is the B85 and which one is the B95. Next, we got the ASUS BQ16 Pro, and arguably it is the nicest design from the bunch only because it has this hidden Wi-Fi 7. So we got the Wi-Fi right there and then the 7 right here and it looks awesome. But when you're first looking at it, you're like, oh, I could kind of tell there's something there, but I can't quite tell until you put it at the angle. Then you could see that it says Wi-Fi 7, which is awesome. And then we got a USB 3.0. We have two 10 gig ports. So you got a dedicated 10 gig port for the internet. And then it could go out of this to the other one. Uh, so you got another 10 gig here, which is great. Uh, and then you have three other ports, which are gigabit speeds. Uh, we got a USB 3.0, we got the power right here, we got the power on and off switch. And on the bottom, we got a factory reset right there button. And then we got the WPS right there. I'm just hiding the info for the serial number and stuff. Then we got the Netgear Orbi, and this is the biggest of the bunch, or at least definitely the tallest. We got a bunch of ports in the back. Let me bring it closer. We got the sync button right here. The reset, we got four 2.5 gigabit ports, and we got two other 10 gigabit ports here. This is where your internet connection would go, so it is dedicated ports. And then this one can either go to a switch or it could go to the satellite at full 10 gigs. We got the power right here, and on the bottom, we this thing can actually be wall mounted. So Netgear like sells this accessory that screws in here and here and it can actually be, and that part of it goes to the wall. So you can do that. And the satellite is exactly the same shape and size, uh, except it has less ports. So the satellite itself has the sink, the factory reset, two 2.5 gigabit ports, and a 10 gig port right there. And then the power and basically the same as the router where it can be wall mounted if you wanted it to. So we have the power supplies. Both of the decos have exactly the same power plugs. So they're both 100 to 240 volts and the output is 75 watts. They take the most amount of space and again, they are the largest. They also have the longest reach as well. So the Eero Max 7 is 45 watts. It takes the least amount of power and it's via USB-C. By the way, you guys could ignore the labels. I just have a lot of routers. So I need some way of figuring out what belongs to what. Um, then we got the ASUS BQ16 Pro, which is very similar to the Netgear Orbeez 970. In terms of size, it's a slightly larger, but both of these are 60 watts and they're very similar plugs. The ASUS, however, is 100 to 240 volts, where the Netgear is 100 to 120 volts. So we're gonna start with the internet speed test. As you guys know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. For me, that would be five gigabits per second upload and download. And all of these support up to 10 gig speeds. When I connect it with the ethernet connected device, I'm supposed to be able to get my five gig speeds, which I do with almost all of them, 
except the Eero. With pretty much the rest, I do get the full 5 gig speeds up and down. With the Eero, it has gotten better with recent firmware updates, but I'm still not quite to that to those 5 gig speeds. Internally, the Eero has shown 5 gig speeds, but on the speed test website, speedtest.net, the highest I saw was 4.7, but I I average right around 4.6 for the up and down uh, with this, which is still very, very fast, uh, but I have seen five with the rest of these, just pointing that out. Now with the Wi-Fi devices, it typically can't go that fast. So looking at the results with the Wi-Fi 7 devices, it looks like the king happens to be the Eero Max 7. Now, some of them are very close to it, but I actually got the fastest Wi-Fi speeds on the Eero Max 7, which was kind of odd that I got the slowest um, internet speeds on Ethernet. So to find the true performance of these mesh systems, I need to do a local speed test server, and I've done a separate video on this on how to set it up. But basically, I set up my computer as a server, and I go from Wi-Fi device to the router to the computer, and in the case of wired or wireless backhaul, I go from Wi-Fi device to the secondary one, which jumps to the primary one, which then goes to the server. And this way, I get rid of the public speed test server and my ISP, so those are no longer factors. And looking at these speeds, there's usually an improvement, and this is what really tells you the story. So looking at these speeds for the single router configuration, it looks like, once again, the Eero took the cake, at least for the download section, and for the upload section, it looks like the ASUS took that as well. Overall, it looks like the most consistent was the ASUS, where it had the closest download and upload speed. That was, I want to say, symmetric almost. Uh, and both of them were very fast. So I think overall, ASUS was probably the best, but the fastest download happens to be the Eero. Next, we jump into the wired backhaul configuration, which means I'm testing from the secondary one. We got very similar speeds to the single router configuration, rightfully so, because they all have an additional 10 gig port that can make it to the secondary access point or satellite. So again, very similar where the Eero Max 7 got the fastest download speed, but overall, the, more, the most consistent one happened to be the ASUS with the most symmetrical speeds. Finally, we've got to wireless backhaul. There is a reduction in speeds. However, they're all still very fast, but one of them definitely took the cake, which is the Deco BE95. Crazy, crazy fast speeds, uh, even on wireless backhaul. And yes, you can actually connect a Wi-Fi device, uh, <laughs> sorry, an Ethernet device directly to this, even though it's wirelessly talking to the main router. And in fact, if you do that, you'll get crazy fast speeds. And in fact, I've done videos demonstrating this just to show you guys how fast it is, even in wireless backhaul, if you connect an ethernet connected device to it, which I'm not showing the speeds in this video, but in the separate videos, I actually show it on the screen while I'm running the speed test. Links below if you guys are interested. All right, next we get to range test. Now range will vary drastically by location. Like legitimately, it can vary drastically because it depends on, you know, if you're in between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, essentially the more obstructions you have, typically the less range you're gonna get. So in my case, all of these are tested in the same environments to keep the fair, to keep the test consistent. So at 20 feet away, hardly a drop across the board. At 50 feet away, this is when I'm outside, and there's a drastic drop across the board, but they're all still very, very fast. But as of now, the Eero Max 7 with the download speed is taking the cake. The fact that it could get over 2 gigs, <laughs> even though I'm outside, is very, very impressive. And then I go up to 100 feet, which is across the street, and I'm still getting very, very usable speeds. But at this point, it looks like the Orbi took the cake for the download speeds. In fact, like I was pretty much almost getting gigabit speeds off the Orbi on the download section very, very fast. And it looks like the B85 had the fastest upload speed from the bunch, but they are all kind of similar to each other where I, I feel like at the 100 foot mark, the Orbi kind of took the cake there. Um, just It kind of just reduced down the least amount. Um, from the furthest distance. And all of these can go further than 100 feet, but I just capped my test at 100 feet. For setup and configuration, all of these have their own associated apps. So you got the Orbi app for the neck gear, you got the Asus router app for the Asus, you got the Deco app for the TP links, and you got the Eero app for the Max 7. Right off the bat, if you're someone who wants options, Asus is the way to go. They have the most options. They also have a web interface that has a ton 
more options. Um, Asus has so many more options than the rest. It's it's not even like in the same league. Um, so does that mean you need to tinker every option? No. In fact, I leave most of the stuff alone. I tinker with like one or two things and I'm done. So it has way more options than I need. And the uh, interface itself is still fairly straightforward. It's fairly easy to use. Uh, but if you want to tinker, if you want to go to Tinkerland, Asus is the way to go. The other benefit of the Asus is all the features that it comes with are included in the price. You don't need to pay a separate subscription. Whereas with the rest of them, if you want certain features, you do have to pay a certain subscription. Uh, for instance, with the neck gear, it does come with a trial, but if you want the neck gear armor for more protection, that does require a separate subscription. After the trial for the parental controls, that's a separate one. Um, for the deco, if you want additional, it comes with parental controls. Um, but if you want additional parental controls, that does require a separate subscription. With the Eero, if you want parental controls, period, that requires a separate subscription. Now, with some of these subscriptions, you get additional features like a VPN and things like that. Uh, so it's not like, oh, you're just paying for that one thing. Like with the Eero, you do get a few extra things. Uh, but just keep that in mind um, so for your purchasing decisions. Now, to summarize, all of these are fantastic. They're, in fact, they're really close to each other. It's, it's hard for me to pick a winner. If there was an obvious difference, I'd be like, oh, this one's the best right off the bat. No contest. But the thing is, they're all really, really close to each other. So it's kind of hard to pick a winner. Um, but I will pick a winner. So, and if you guys want to guess which winner I'm going to pick, leave it in the comment sections below. I'm genuinely curious to know if you guys are going to uh, guess correctly. Uh, and the hints are going to be my internet speeds are five gigs up and down and I use wired backhaul. So keep those two things in mind when you're picking the winner. Okay. But right off the bat, if you have internet speeds of in excess of two gigs and you're running wireless backhaul, I'd go with the Deco. It had the best overall wireless backhaul speeds, uh, the BE95 specifically. Um, if you want to tinker your router, tinker the settings, if you want solid performance and everything included in the price, I'd go with ASUS. A very, very solid choice. If you want Zigbee and Thread built in, let's say you have some Zigbee devices, that you don't want to have a separate hub and still offer really good performance, you could go with the Eero. Um, the BE85 is really kind of very similar to the B95, not quite as fast, but still very good performance. And sometimes some of these are also on sale, which can sway me one way or another. So keep that in mind as well. But right off the bat, they're all fantastic. It's just, in my case, when I'm not testing routers, which I happen to be doing quite often, where I'm switching through routers, running it for a week or two or something like that or longer, testing it, seeing if there's drops or anything like that. But when I'm not testing, the router I pick the most happens to be the Orbi. Uh, it's not the exclusive one I use. I have used the Asus, I have used both of the Decos and I have used the Eero, but most of the time I do default to the Orbi. Um, it has really good range. It's just solid performance. Honestly, just like the rest, solid performance. Uh, but it hasn't let me down, so I just keep using it. But let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. And yes, there will be a Wi-Fi 7 individual router review coming up as well, where I'm going to connect uh, the GTB98 Pro, the B96U, I'll compare the TP-Link Archer G800, and so on. So be sure to subscribe, way more videos coming up. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.